I've got Coach Jess with me and client Stacy. Hello, everyone. We're going to go ahead and take a journey through the Dutch test using a real life case study and then also helping Stacy progress in her uh, fitness and health journey. So Stacy, if you would, for just a minute, kind of share me just a couple of the highlights before we dig into the test on mm -hmm. what's been happening and what you'd like to accomplish. Well, Jess has helped me a great deal as far as just so I can start eating normal again. I don't know how much you know about the colitis. Yes. Um, as far as my history, mm -hmm. um, I'm still following Jess's meal plan. I'm still hovering. I've lost a few pounds since her and I had stopped the coaching. And I just seem to be hovering around the same. I guess I shouldn't look at the number maybe on the scale so much because I know I'm stronger. I've been able to lift again like normal. My mm -hmm. cardio has been great. But I kind of feel like I'm just in a holding pattern. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if it's, you know, something I'm not taking in that I should or something off with my body or yeah. that's where the frustration is. Great question. So just to update for the, the video for one uh, suffering from colitis, it's been about, was it seven years? How many years has it been? No, actually last September, a year ago was when all of this started. And then awesome. I had seven my gallbladder months. out as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. And so, um, but history of dieting, I'm assuming, right? Um, no, I've actually always kind of been like a clean eater and I've always been super thin. So I never, I've never had to ever in my life, this is the first time, try to lose any kind of weight. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be able to change my diet up and literally in a week, I'd be like, okay, I'm back to normal. You mm -hmm. know, if I put on a couple pounds or something. So like I said, I don't know. I know also with my age, if I'm pre-menopausal now, if any of that, you know, has anything to do with it either. Yeah. So what we're going to do, so let's kind of go this way first. So this will, this will help us kind of um, explain some of the mystery a little bit. Okay. So, you know, when you talk about the difference between maybe health and metabolic function. We're going to talk about things in terms of a, of an axis. So the earth is on a 22 degree axis, right? Mm -hmm. And if that axis gets off by one degree, you know, the oceans would probably rise and things would go to chaos. And you wouldn't necessarily know that it was like a degree of axis change. You would just see the symptoms of it. Right. Okay. And, and so when, when you look at, let's say on one side of this, you've got a sugar burner. So Okay. And then you realize that there's this axis that everything is built on. Okay. That kind of holds this in place. Right. And then to be able to go from a sugar burner into a fat burner. Okay. That ability to transition from sugar into fat, you said you'd drop some calories or you'd cut maybe some carbs, maybe a little yes. bit of your body would, would go there pretty quickly. Yes. Well, there's a, there's a series of hormones, melatonin, leptin, thyroid, cortisol. <clears throat> and then we could, you can break sex hormones off up into, you know, maybe we'll call, we're just going to go female hormones and male hormones because they're in both males and females. But so that would right. be like your estrogen, progesterone for females, androgens, testosterone for men and all the metabolites. And, and so the, one of the triggers that can really shift these, you could really, there's a, there's a, there's a hormone intermediary that I don't want to get too technical with, but if we wanted to add inflammation as a hormone, we could, or we can just describe it as inflammation is part of the trigger. So autoimmune diseases are highly hormonally related. Okay. Um, and, and so what happens is as you put pressure on this system from inflammatory issues, what starts happening is the hormones start to move. And the further they get off the axis, the harder this becomes. So you get blocked and you stay a sugar burner. Right. And then you'll notice that, you know, okay. So then things that I would usually manipulate to get me into fat burning 
i.e. maybe reducing my calories, which is known as K calories, maybe mm -hmm. dropping carbs, maybe increasing my workouts, right? Um, yeah. maybe some people taking fat burners or, you know, whatever their, their, their thing is, the more that I push these, the more resistance I get. So even if I try these methods, it, it gets worse and, and it's shutting this down. And so I stay here. And the problem is when I stay here and I push harder, the body still stays in sugar burning. And when there's no sugar to burn, glycogen has been used, carbs are gone. I'm just eating muscle because protein can be converted into sugar. Okay. So, so that's why there's blocks coming. Up. Now, there are also things that we do to our body to try to make our body force it into fat burning. And those things end up slowing our metabolic rate. So you've got what's called your BMR and your you can recall race it resting energy expenditure, total energy expenditure. We're going to go T D E E total daily energy expenditure. So your BMR basal metabolic rate may be what you just burn resting. Like if you didn't move, so that might be anywhere in the neighborhood of for you 1400 to 1800. But usually when you start pushing these things down, we start your body adapts to it. So what your whatever your BMR ends up being, it ends up dropping maybe to a thousand to twelve hundred, okay, and then just moving and trying to work out and using energy as a way to reduce caloric impact. A, a typical person uh, might be around for you and your height, weight, size, whatever, twenty two to twenty four hundred calories total burn for the day. But now it might be down to fourteen hundred to eighteen hundred. So you get okay. these reduced metabolic ability because you're pushing on a system that won't hormonally budge right and so then the second negative effect from hormone imbalance or your axis being off is reduced metabolic function because it's a because you're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and so it over time when you stay there it adapts okay does that make sense a little bit yeah yeah it does like your eye is the light Yes. Your body's going to adapt. You know, if you only fed it a thousand calories and you just kept losing three pounds a week, you'd die. Right. So adaption is actually a survival component of the metabolism. It's just not good right now. Right. You don't want to adapt <laughs> now. Like, no, 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 no. Don't do that now. I'll do, that, I'll do that thing later. Right. Right. So, so ultimately we're, we're fighting two battles, right? We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're fighting with this axis issue. And then we're fighting the adaptions of a system that's that that can't break the plane of fat. So you try different things and you keep pushing it, and it reduces. Well, it makes our system more efficient. So now it'll work off of less, which isn't good when we want it to work off of more. So it'll burn fat resources. Okay, that's about as simple I can make a really complicated thing. <laughs> okay, and so then okay. Well, Vince, I see the big picture here. Um, what can we do about it? Right. Well, there, there's two ways to work this. There's the, the metabolic angle, which it sounds like some of that Jess had done with you and, and you might be yes. speeding up and doing alternative, uh, you know, alternative dieting systems or diet variation or, you know, there might be things here, but we, we might have to work your metabolism up here but there's also putting this back into balance, right? Okay, right, yeah. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today, for the most part, focusing on putting this into balance. Okay. Okay. And how the best test that exists for this, there isn't just one test right now. Currently my team and my medical team and, and people are working on helping me get out a test that has everything in one. The best test that exists currently in one is the Dutch test, right? So this is right. what we're going to use. Um, there can be other additional things you may want to look at later, but if you okay. had to do a one-off test, that's going to make you feel better. That's going to make you look better. That's going to get you as hormonally optimized and your axis back online as possible. Okay. It's going to be this test.
So then we're going to walk a journey of hormone optimization to re rekindle, respark, rebalance, whatever re you want to put at the end of that, your metabolic axis. Or no matter what you do, you're going to be, you know, beating a dead horse. And then it just, the more that you, you know, you can kick a horse into glue, but you just get stuck. Right. Which is where you kind of find yourself right now, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So when, when we look at this test, the first thing that you're going to see here is just your general uh, hormonal profile of your three, we'll call them your big three, okay? Estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone. And generally, somebody that's in alignment is going to have the dials all the same. And as we see here, that's not the case, right? Right. Um, I actually like your progesterone level. So the first thing you can look at evaluate is where is it in range by itself? Like where is is it in a balanced range? Is that hormone in an optimized area? I, I would argue that your estradiol and your progesterone are. And they're right in, in mid range. Now, this is for hormone optimization or balance. If we wanted to say, for physique enhancement purposes, if I want things to want my surface to look a little better, mm-hmm. after things have been balanced, you could argue that estrogen could even come down a little bit, that it okay. might carry a little less water with it. But the first thing is getting your metabolism to work. So we don't necessarily need it that way. What okay. we have to look at is, are, are, is everything in balance? And the answer is clearly no, right? Right. So let's dig a little bit deeper. Okay, so those are male and female hormones. We, we, we take this test and we get a little deeper as we go. So remember, if we go back to this, we talk about cortisol here, right? It's one of the key right. hormones, right? And, yeah. and so when you look here, our cortisol is in the tank. And so what this shows us when we see no DHEA production, I'm a little intrigued by that value. I'm wondering if there's a medic, are we on a medication for colitis? Um, I'm not taking anything. The only thing I have is for reflux and I haven't even been taking that. So currently, no, I haven't been taking anything except your supplements (laughs) that just said, man, that's it. Great. So, cause, cause this would imply something that's called androgen deficiency. Okay. So you've got none of the hormones that build muscle and that's a problem. And I don't know how long that's been a problem for you because that means every time you try to lose weight, you're losing too much muscle. And then when you try to put calories back on or you bring calories back up, it's not being turned into muscle. It's all fat. Right. So if you do enough revolutions of that, this is part of what can happen. 